Hello YouTube, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all doing well. On this adventure, we visit the Lost Coast, the Redwood Forest, and to top it off, Pismo Beach. This episode will also feature two sand recoveries. And I learned how to drive up a steep sand dune. Big thanks to RS for helping me organize this trip and to Alex from Wagon Tech for providing route information and recommendations on where to camp and where to visit. So let's get this adventure started. From Southern California, the Lost Coast is a 12 hour drive. Our plan is to visit Usal Beach and enter from the south side, which is just north of Fort Bragg. I highly recommend you run a forward scout. This is going to be a single vehicle that drives way ahead of the pack to warn of oncoming traffic. You might have to back up as far as a quarter mile to pull over to let someone pass. As you progress through the trail, it widens quite a bit to allow for passing. It's just that first mile or so where the trail's super tight. The drive down to Usal Beach is scenic and quite easy. There was actually a sign that says the road is maintained except for the winter months. There wasn't anything technical about this trail. After a storm, I'm sure that the road could become washed out, but when it's dry like this, need not worry, right? You know what? This trail was so easy that I saw a Toyota Camry and a Chevy Spark out on the beach. For some reason I had the impression that this trail would be flat and along the coast, but know that there is a good amount of elevation gain. This is where you make a left and go straight down to Usal Beach. When we rolled in, it was a bit gloomy. I guess these were typical conditions for the coast of Northern California. Hello. Oh, hi. hi, I'm John. I'm, I'm I am John. Yes. I'm Joanne. Joanne, nice to meet yeah, you. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> Big thank you to Joanne, Janet, and Gerald for helping us secure this campsite. This event was posted up on our Facebook page called Crossover Landing Hub. This is not a club or group or click, it's just a Facebook page. The goal is to bring like-minded overlanders together regardless of what you drive. I also started this page for you, people on YouTube. Many of you ask me how do I get in on these trips and this was the answer. Day one on Usul Beach was kind of a bummer because it was so gloomy. We were hoping for better conditions the following morning.
you doing? I'm Rob Harris. This is my F-150 Ford Lariat 2018 4x4. 3.5 uh, EcoBoost. Good gas mileage. Love the performance of the truck. Riding on 33s. 2.5 inch leveling kit. He Wolf uh, Tant tried it for the first time. Brought it out for this trip. Don't really care for it too much. It's a little too flimsy. The shape just ergonomically just doesn't work for me personally. So I'm gonna wind up sending it back and probably, um, I think I'm gonna go with a Gazelle or a Shift Pod uh, in the near future. Right there, the Shift Pod Mini and then probably, I might do a full size one, I'm just not sure yet. But being old with a bad back, I need something um, if possible so I can stand up and get dressed and stretch. Hey, roll, roll your son down the hill. No. Come on, it'll be fun. No. It'll be fun. Hey, is that a platypus? Oh. Are you talking about the bird? <laughs> oh, it's, a common, it's a common murr. So here's the Peter M. Douglas Trail, otherwise known as the Enchanted Forest Hike. Yeah. Feels like this is one in the most freaking dinosaur ages over here. I know. <laughs> wow. Wow. So the story goes these candelabra redwood trees were forged by really harsh conditions of salty coastal water and strong winds. This forces them to grow extra branches instead of growing really tall. Huh. trying to get Bola to come with us. Yeah, he didn't want to go. <laughs> Uh-oh. That hike was a really good workout. 2.6 miles one way. And actually, before that hike, we came across this memorial. Back in 2002, after some partying, she fell out of the back of a pickup truck and unfortunately passed away. It looks like your family and loved ones just wanted to give you all a reminder to be safe because recklessness could lead to death. I didn't catch it on camera and this white truck is doing just fine, but there was a red pickup truck full of teenagers in the back and they're trying to do donuts and drive crazy and I just yelled out real loud, hey, did you guys read that memorial plaque? Yeah, so uh, it stopped, but... 
they're shooting off fireworks over there and you know that's kind of what you deal with when you're over here at uh, Usal Beach. <laughs> 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 Last night they were shooting them off like crazy. Oh there. geez, I missed that then. Yeah, so this is what we're dealing with, uh, which I don't know how you feel about it, but you have fireworks on the beach. Uh, it's July 20, no, it's August now, huh? It's the 31st. There were signs that said no fireworks. There were signs that said no drones either. Yeah, yeah, no drill. So, <laughs> yeah. why, why are you guys all looking at me? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's just saying. Like, what drill? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, hey, man, get this shot for me, man. Get this shot for me, man. <laughs> hey, get the shot of you. Who's that? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Something's happening. The black truck? That's the one's doing it. No, the one. In the afternoon, they're shooting Roman candles in the ocean. All right, we should just all shoot our guns off. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you start seeing the birds drop. <laughs> all right, 10:32. This is the deal. Sounds like, like they got some Indian techno going on out there. Hip hop over here. Unfortunately, I survived the night. Sleeping in my Honda Passport is very quiet. I didn't even hear the crazy fireworks and loud music. Apparently, there was a rave party called Vibes that was raging just on the outskirts of the beach in the trees. So this means that the Lost Coast isn't very lost. The only thing you're going to lose is cell phone reception. And if your idea was to get away from people, you might come across some of the worst people out there. It's good we have people like this guy to compensate. Hey. Wait, wait I, I wasn't recording Dang yet. It. Hold on. 2020 Toyota Tacoma uh, off-road. So it's got all the fancy off-road gadgets, which I never use. A uh, two-inch OME lift. Uh, turns out it's more like two and a half, but eventually that'll settle. Um, I've got slightly oversized tires. They're just shy of 32 inches Duratrax, which I really like. Um, they're lightweight. They're great hybrid terrain tires. Um, I've got uh, RCI steel skid plates um, and RCI aluminum skid plates. I did a... Uh, exhaust reroute on the bottom to eliminate this annoying little hump that the, uh, the Tacomas have. It's like a two inch loss of, of ground clearance, so that's nice. The Tacoma's not known to have a very high payload, and so everything from the soft topper to the aluminum skids for me is about weight savings. The only thing I have on here that's kind of like a luxurious uh, heavy item is probably the roof rack, which comes in at about 45 pounds. The soft topper I think is like 40 or 50 pounds maybe compared to a 200 pound canopy. Yeah, so I've torn most of it down now, but uh, I've got the Zell T3 X tent, um, which is just a slight upgrade of their uh, original T3. It's, you know, as the name implies, it's a three man tent, but it's perfect for one person uh, in a cot, which is what I like to use, sleep comfortable. Um, I use Husky storage bins for like everything. Uh, I try to organize them into uh, an individual purpose. Like this is my camp kitchen. This is my food. I've got a bin for like personal care supplies, one for electronics, and then one for kind of miscellaneous camp uh, supplies. Like I've got a battery powered vacuum I can use to vacuum out the tent. My plan was to interview everyone at camp to talk about the rigs, but this lady ran up to us and she was in distress. Her truck was on the other side of the beach and it was high centered and stuck. So now I'm grabbing my traction boards to help her out. These boards were sent to me by Bunker Industries for testing. They said, hey, do an unbiased review. To the rescue are the boys from Borderline Explorer. If you watch my channel, then you probably have seen them do more than a handful of recoveries. She's all the way out here. It's um, oh my see, goodness. Out here, she's she is dug very, in. Very to the frame. Holy crap. Dude, I'm gonna have to air. No way that's happening. 
Can you winch her out? Uh, no, she'll drag me. Oh. I'm like that. It's like so soft right here. Yeah. I don't want to get stuck. Dude, there's a high chance we're going to get stuck. We got her. We got her down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she's really, really buried. We got to go down to about maybe 10 PSI. Ooh. We're, go we're, go <coughs> we're going down to 10 PSI. All right, so she is you know, actually pretty aggressive on the top, but to make it even better, it is super aggressive on the bottom, more aggressive. These teeth are thick. These teeth are long. Here's Nori setting up his Jeep Gladiator with his winch to perform the recovery. This man in the Jeep got the news. He rushed over to assist. Actually, it's a good thing because Nori and the Jeep Gladiator could really use something called an anchor. That Jeep is going to attach to the rear of the Gladiator to help hold him down. Okay. This guy was right over there. We kind yeah. of told him what was going on. He right. said, sure, I'll help. Yeah. So, uh, there he goes. He's setting up as an anchor. See that? The dog's, uh, the dog's driving. He's like, hey, master, just let me know when to go. Exactly. <laughs> Here it goes. All right, so we heard these uh, these Subarus right here were part of the group, but it doesn't look like they're awake just yet. So we'll check back with them. We'll check back with them a little later. Oh, hey, my name's Emmanuel. So here I have my uh, 2011 Acura MDX. Um, I've got it on some 265-6018s. Uh, I also have a 50 millimeter lift on the rear and uh 45 here on the front that's uh i think it's like a 1.8 in the front and a two in the rear and this is my first time out here overlanding with uh really anybody so mainly do a lot of camping just tent camping at local spots and um yeah stumbled on your page and met up with john so it's been a lot of fun but tried to be a little minimalist i just picked up this little pop-up from uh one of the gentlemen that was on your your videos so he recommended it and um, it worked pretty well. And then of course, yeah, got the little privacy tent back there. I have a little table back here that folds up and when it's not, when it's completely out, then I utilize it kind of as like a little pantry area, store my dishes and uh, some food in there. No low skid plates, uh, have all of them, have the gas, have the rear diff and uh, the fronts. I had to do some custom plates just to mount them up to my rig, but nothing really too extensive. Highly would recommend, yeah. Hey, I got the iPad on it, Nice. She just stared. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, baby? <laughs> yep, when you go to sleep. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Jason. This is my 2012 Honda Pilot. Two and a half, three inch lift in the rear, one and a half in the front. Uh, 265, 60s, 18s. You got the Yakima camper on the roof. And a little camp set up back here. The little fridge, the water. My favorite, my water port. We all know how much John loves the water port. I had the conversation last night about it. Um, that's about it. And then I got a crazy little dog in there somewhere. Before leaving Usol Beach, I had to put some traction boards to the test. Are they going to help you in sand? Let's find out. My tires are at 20 psi, and I'm trying to drive up this at three miles per hour. From this position, I'm applying the Bunker Industries traction boards. Oh, wow. 
Good result. Now let's try Expo boards. The board on the front passenger tire got sucked under. Now let's try bunker industry boards again. Nope, same result as x -Bowl. Let's connect these and use them as railroad tracks. Here I'll be going 3 to 5 miles an hour. There you go, they definitely made a difference. But I'm not stopping the test just yet. Let's try again without the boards, same speed. Damn it, I still made it. <laughs> what? That's why you repeat tests. Now I'm going to drive up one to two miles per hour. My only explanation is that the boards compacted the sand, making the surface not as loose. I don't know, what do you think? Now we're gonna use a steeper sandy hill. All right, now I'm stuck. We're gonna apply traction boards to all four tires now. Nope, obstacle is too severe. I'm going to back up just a little bit to get a running start. Well, that didn't work. And now I'm backed up more. With a decent amount of momentum, I was not able to get up. I didn't use traction boards though, so let's go add some. I got close, but needed more momentum. So this lesson right here is gonna come into play later on in the trip, when I visit Pismo Beach. This is called Avenue of the Giants. It's a giant redwood forest with a road that runs through the middle of it. And that was about it for me. Uh, it was really cool for one whole minute. And then the magic just ended. I guess I set my expectations too high for some of the tallest trees in the world. I don't have any regrets. I know I'd go crazy thinking about what that forest would be like if I had not gone. Beautiful scenery. So that's a tip, is you come out here in the middle of the week. Oh, we got people surfing out there. That's cool. YouTube video that started it all was at Pismo Beach. Remember that video got uh, about 30,000 views in the first week or so. Just went crazy about me driving my Subaru on the Oceano Dunes and by the beach like this. All right, y'all air down? Yep. Okay, 15? 15. 15's a good pressure, max airing down right there. 
And here is our flag selection. You can see if I got this right. Ooh, you see that? Oh man, let's get that again. Let's check out this flag selection. And boom. <laughs> oh, that right in a row. <laughs> Flags. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is fitting for Nick right there. There we go. I'm, I'm taking I, this is this is the flag I've always had. So I'm taking that one. This is definitely Nori. Oh yeah, there you go. This is Nori. And this one is Nick. <laughs> I thought you'd like the American flag. Oh okay. Because he, yeah. he imports American stuff to Japan. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That's so yeah. that's why, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I did American before. That is his life, importing American overlanding products to, to Japan. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Life. <laughs> that's his life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is the main reason we stopped by Pismo Beach slash Oceano Dunes is because Nick and Nancy have never been on a sand dune before. Here's Nick with the Subaru Ascent. Has the heart of the Outback Wilderness. Or the Wilderness has the heart of the Ascent. All right, he's gonna lead. I'm recording, so someone lead. Momentum's your friend, but um, you know when you got power, then uh, it's not as necessary. All the vehicles here have lots of power, especially that Toyota with the 5.7 liter V8. Might as well turn on my off-road lights for the, you know, poser landing points, right? Woo! Look at that. Oh, it looks so cool. Looks like you're going sideways, Nick. <laughs> oh, watching you slide looks so awesome. All right, to our left is Mac and the Tundra. A bit bumpy here. There's Nick powering through. Uh, cool, there's a 
sign that's... Looks like they're just chilling up there with a campfire going. There's a sign that says, don't die. The top of that crest, which way do I go? <laughs> do you just go straight after you crest up the top? Keep going straight. Wait, 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 Nick, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, hold on, buddy. Don't. What is he? Oh, shit. Yeah, Nick, just stay right there, man. Um, hey, Nori, can you come back over here, man? Um, and just give us some guidance on what to do here. Um, do not crest. You know what? Hold on, hold on. All right, coming back. We need to block that off, too, so someone doesn't try to drive down it. Here, Nick finds himself in a scary situation. I've been there before. My first time on the sand dunes, I nearly rolled my Subaru. Right now, Nori is guiding Nick to back up and avoid the sand bowl to the right. But unfortunately, it looks like he's getting too close to sinking into that sand pit. At this point, winching him up is the only good option. For my first time at the Oceana Dunes, click up at the top right. What's happening right now? And uh, yeah, this that's a steep bowl. Really hard to climb. <laughs> and slowly follow. A little bit of gas. Nori's winch comes in handy again. He's saved so many people with that thing. I need to consider getting one myself. The winch isn't doing all the work. Nick is having to give it some gas and try to drive up. And in doing so, the wheels spin and the transmission gets extra hot. Hey, let's take a break. Uh, Trans 240. All right, and Nick, you have a scan gauge. Transmission temp is at uh, 230. So now Nick is at 2.15, cool down uh, pretty quickly actually. Okay, give it so, power. So, here we go. All right, well that was fun. What do you guys want to do now? I need a beer. <laughs> we could make that, we could arrange that. We could arrange that. Now it's my turn to get up this. I am not going to follow Nick's line. I actually want to go more in the center and just go straight up. That way if I slide, I won't get sucked down into a bowl. I also want to utilize what I learned during that traction board test at Usal Beach. It seemed that running up the trail and then kind of compacting the sand helped out. I'm not sure if it's going to work here, but I do give it a try. Nick, do you have a radio? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's saying he's never been on an obstacle like this before. What do you recommend? You need to back up as far as you can go and take a run at it. So, back up. 
back up, back up, keep backing up as far up as you can get. Will I be damaging my drive shaft here? The dune? No. All right, all right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up that. You know, I almost, I think I almost kind of got to the top. Almost, but you ran out of momentum. You should have it now. Go, 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 go,